So to begin, take us inside this new Emirati interplanetary mission. What is the goal here? This is our second interplanetary exploration mission. The goal of this mission is to study the asteroid belt. We're selecting seven different asteroids, landing on the last one. And to get there, we have the chance of having a flyby by Venus. Uh, we're also going to image Venus and, and uh, observe it um, along the way. And reaching the asteroid belt is one thing, but doing actual science there is another. So take me inside some of the scientific objectives of this mission. What do you want to learn? Our overarching objective is to look at the asteroid belt and the constituents there. Of course, they give us the initial building blocks of planets that evolved uh, within our solar system. Uh, another aspect that we have on this mission, Dan, is the development of capabilities that is underlying our space program as a whole. And we're focusing it now on transitioning into investing in industries, uh, especially high-tech industries, utilizing the space sector as a catalyst. And what does the timeline look like? How soon before we get there? So we're scheduled for launch in the beginning of 2028. The mission is a five-year scientific mission. Uh, it takes a bit of a time to get beyond Mars orbit. That's where the asteroid belt lies. Um, and we're going to be in our science mission for about five years, um, ending in 2033. Okay, so as I understand it, this is a 3.6 billion kilometer five-year journey into space. What are some of the challenges that Emirati scientists are going to need to overcome in order to orbit Venus and re reach the main asteroid belt located somewhere beyond Mars? The primary technological challenges that we're going to face is one, heat from the sun, because we get so close to the sun. And therefore, that's going to change a bit our structure. We need to blanket the spacecraft to make sure that our electronics are working and, and they are in their ideal temperature. And then we get really far away from the sun, more than 400 million kilometers away from the sun. And therefore, the amount of solar energy we're going to get is quite low. So we need to revisit how much our, how, uh, the size of our solar panels, how we manage power on the overall spacecraft, and then going around and space and uh, uh, and orbiting close and far away from the sun uh, throughout the course of the five years puts a bit of strain um, on the spacecraft. So those are all technological challenges that we're happy with. We're landing on the final asteroid. We want to demonstrate some technologies for landing so that we can further advance capabilities um, on studying asteroids. Asteroids are very important, not only to look at the history of our, of our planet, but to look forward on the um, uh, on the future of of exploration and especially the future of human exploration. So that's a segment that we also will factor into our science objectives. Absolutely, and you've said that this is actually five times more complex than the Emirates Mars mission, which is going to require a lot of brain and a lot of willpower as well. Tell me about some of your scientific and knowledge partners on this project. Who's actually helping to get this thing off the ground, so to speak? So we're factoring in uh, universities at the moment, both within the uh, the Emirates, so UAE University, Khalifa University, and we've also partnered up with our long-term partner in, in planetary exploration, Laboratory for Atmospheric Space Physi Physics out of the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, as we move forward with stating what our science objectives, once we have a better understanding of what the spacecraft's going to look like, what are the instrumentation that's going to go in there, we're going to enter in more and more companies that are established and based in the UAE who are either able to support in the design and development process or support in the manufacturing and development process. Um, and that's going to increase the pool of uh, players who will benefit from this mission. Because like I said, this is going to be a catalyst to establish advanced technology capabilities in our existing industry. And help me understand the impact on the ground as well, because when you look at programs like this, the cost of the Emirati space program really has to be justified by demonstrating benefits for citizens on the ground. So what is the return on investment for everyday Emiratis, the region and the world? So for everybody Emiratis and the region, it's the establishment of capabilities in the space sector for industry. This is the biggest play that we're going to have. Why is this important? Everything we have in our lives today, from understanding climate change, from knowing how to build, build road networks, relies on space technologies. 
Um, and as we continue advancing, building an increased reliance on space technologies that are coming out of our region is very important, especially in lowering co costs and making it more and more specialized to our to, to uh, our own requirements. So that's the first play that you have, and that's a direct uh, return of in in investment play. When you talk about the wider sense of things, and I think you experienced it with the arrival of the Mars of the Mars mission um, in February, it's an entire transformation of risk appetite. Um, this mission is far more complex by the, than the Emirates Mars mission, but there's no way we could have sold this a year ago. The risk appetite has increased. Once you have a risk appetite increase, the, the ripple effect on society is quite remarkable, especially when we're talking about transitioning an entire nation to one that is based on knowledge, one that is based on science and technology. You need to increase your risk appetite. You need to understand how to deal with failure and move, move forward from it. And you need to have a large talent base, not only locally, but a talent base that comes in internationally that's well versed in science and technology. Space, I think, is a very nice niche that's able to give you that full direct invest return investment and then provides that societal impact. Uh, and planetary exploration is mesmerizing as it is. It allows you to create that opportunity and provides the right sort of challenge test bed uh, to move forward technologies in a short amount of time. Okay, so what does the timeline look like on that impact? Again, how soon before we see those real world benefits on the ground? So if I take the measurement that we did about two to three years ago with the University College London on the impact of the Emirates Mars mission, we saw an impact as soon as four to five years into the development of this mission. On this mission, when we're to, and that's uh, mostly societal and indirect impact. On this mission, because we are allowing companies in the UAE to get parts of the contracts for development of this mission, we will see a more on the ground uh, capability uh, uh, um, uh, development as, and it's going to be palpable within the first three years because that's when your development timeline goes in. Another aspect of this is transferring this capabilities and know-how into the private sector. So you're going to see an, a, a play on upskilling uh, the capabilities of existing private sector, even if they don't operate, if they oper operate, let's say, in space tangential sectors um, and creating new opportunities for them. Building heritage is a big part of the space industry. You, you don't trust companies that haven't gone to space and tested their devices in space. So we're, we, we have the capability of providing from this mission and also on parallel smaller programs that the space agency is working on to build a lot of this heritage. This is going to benefit this region first. It gives us direct access to the space sector. It allows us to enter into, into areas of the space sector that we see increased investment in, especially in Earth observation systems. And then you have the underlying play, the aspirational aspect, and the challenge building aspect that, that will fall underlying that, that we've already measured the impact of. So let's talk about the business of this specifically. What opportunities can the space economy bring for Emirati companies in the space sector? As competition increases, clearly it's going to be very important for the UAE and for Emirati companies to have access to contracts and procurement for future missions out there, right? Absolutely. If you look at the space economy today, uh, there's a large focus and large play for both communications and also Earth observations and various types of imaging and characterization of Earth in low Earth orbit. And that play is on smaller satellites that are more agile that provide you with higher performance for a lower cost. That is the niche that the UAE comp that we are driving through our projects for the UAE companies to create opportunities for them. Another aspect is to become a significant player in the private sector in the region. And that gives us access to market that is largely untapped. How do you go about doing that? You can't just magically create demand and just by producing satellites. We actually need to focus on downstream. So products and services in space, we're going to have a large play on supporting programs to show the benefit of space products and services to a wider set of sectors that don't necessarily get the results from it. These two plays in place will allow for a significant play in the space economy for the UAE and for the region. What about space tourism? Is this something that the UAE is also considering? So space tourism is something that's on and off. I think this year showed a the first taste of what space tourism is going to look like. 
uh, there are investment companies within the UAE that are lo that, that are looking at or have invested in the past in space tourism. When we looked at it as a space agency, and, and our role is capability development within the sector, um, the capability development, especially for SMEs that will make a large portion of our sector is to be in design and development of components that feeds into the entire spectrum of the sector. So we're not saying our play per se is space tourism, but we're enabling companies to be part of the game uh, in the wrong run and part of the supply chain. And that will give them longevity when it comes to um, ensuring their capabilities are continued to be developed. And I believe it was Neil deGrasse Tyson who famously said, the first trillionaire there will ever be is the person who exploits natural resources on asteroids. So is space mining something that the UAE could also be progressing towards here? So space mining is something to be looked at. Before we look at space mining, then that's where the first trillionaire would come from for utilizing of asteroid resources on Earth. We look at it on utilization of asteroids uh, for resources for space exploration of humans uh, in space. That would be the first step. Um, this is a point that needs to be discussed by space agencies around the world if we want more human presence in space. We are looking at it from a better understanding of how do you utilize asteroids and understand asteroids the closer you get to them, because the images that we have are very grainy and very far away. They're from telescopes in space uh, that we've captured. How do you fully characterize those asteroids to understand like I said, the solar system aspect of it, but also scientifically, I understand before landing on it, which ones are viable. That's an area that we're currently looking at to see how we can add on to it so that we're able to further advance technologies forward. And we're happy to do it from the realm of technology demonstration. And what that gives us is a more breathing space for innovation and allows us to experiment more. So we're adding that technology demonstrator aspect to better understand um, asteroids for resource characterization.